from the most expensive smartphones around with the most expensive CPU chipsets to the cheapest smartphones around housing the cheapest chipsets. This is my Antutu benchmark comparison of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra, iPhone 11 Pro Max, Realme X7 Pro, Oppo F17 Pro, and Redmi K34G. We have the most expensive phone all the way on the left being the Samsung, and the cheapest phone all the way on the right being the Redmi. They've all been updated to their latest available software, that being iOS 14 on the iPhone, Android 11 on the Oppo, and the rest of them are all paired with Android 10. We have six different smartphones here all with six different chipsets the best being the Samsung with the Snapdragon 865 plus processing chip then the Mi 10 Ultra with a Snapdragon 865 the iPhone with an A13 Bionic the Realme with a Dimensity 1000 plus chipset the Oppo F17 Pro with a Helio P95 also made by MediaTek and the Redmi with the Snapdragon 730G most devices over here have a 120 Hertz refresh rate panel except for the iPhone at 60 as well as the Oppo at 60 they all have have AMOLED panels except for the OLED on the Xiaomi and iPhone and the IPS LCD screen on the Redmi. Since the Samsung can only use its 120 hertz refresh rate option with Full HD Plus enabled, we've dropped it down from QHD Plus to match the Full HD Plus on the rest of the panels. Though the iPhone is pretty much in between Full HD and QHD, it can't be changed. We're going to be boosting the phone's performance using their respective high performance modes. The Samsung has high performance and game launcher. The Xiaomi has max performance and game turbo. The iPhone has has no performance options. The Realme and Oppo both have high performance mode game space and competition mode, while the Redmi is stuck to game turbo. They are all running Antutu version 8.4.7 over here. However, iOS's latest Antutu version update is 8.3.4. This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's go. We're going to start here by checking the battery percentage at the start of the test. We will of course compare this at the end of the test, including milliamp hour readings per minute. We also have a heat gun over here to test out the heat dissipation levels. We're going to be using an emissivity level of 0.5 since it's the most accurate when testing out electronic devices. Here are the temperatures at the start of the test. Once again, we'll compare this at the end of the test to see how much they have added on. But for now, the Xiaomi is the hottest and the Redmi is the coolest before the test. We're going to go ahead and start the Antutu version 8 benchmark run. I'll speed up certain sections and slow down other sections over here so that I can give you guys a feel of the stutteriness of the platforms. So the four phones on the left you can see the Snapdragon phones as well as the A13 Bionic on the iPhone and the MediaTek Dimensity 1000 Plus on the Realme are all doing fantastic jobs. However we have the most amount of stutter on the Oppo F17 Pro with the Helio P95 chipset run on 12 nanometer technology and just behind that the Redmi K30 with that lackluster Snapdragon 730G. Though I still think it performs slightly better than the Helio P95 because it is running on 8 nanometer technology so not only is it a little bit quicker but it's also a little bit more efficient when it comes to battery life but I guess we'll have to check that out at the end of this run maybe a lower score on the Oppo will give it the edge in terms of battery life so we went to the second section of the Antutu benchmark over there and the Oppo is still trying to get through it you can see it's a bit laggy over here we never see laggy devices in the second part of the Antutu version 8 run but the Oppo is is definitely defying that. Now the third part of Antutu version 8 over here, the Terracotta Soldiers, they look absolutely epic in the snow here. I've actually seen them in a province called Xi'an here in China. It's really beautiful. I do recommend it if you guys ever do travel this way. As you can see, the Oppo F17 Pro with the Helio P95 is lagging behind here compared to all the other devices, even though I started the Redmi after I started the Oppo, but the devices on the left-hand side are all doing a great job, though there is expected to be a bit of stuttering on even the best of the best chipset on such as the Note 20 Ultra with the Snapdragon variant that I have because this is a very graphics intense video. This part of Antutu that is and if you guys would like to see an FPS counter for this go make sure that you check that out on my channel as we're sitting at around 15 FPS on all devices over here when running the third part of Antutu version 8. The iPhone has gotten really dim here I can assure you that auto brightness is off and the brightness is set to max and it only changed halfway through the test it's really strange maybe the phone was getting a bit hot so it decided to dim the brightness of the panel this is not the first time it's happened to me it's happened to me before just while randomly using the device please let me know in the comment section if you guys have experienced the same
same issue as I have. It's really frustrating, but hopefully that gets fixed with the iPhone 12. It could have actually just been a bug with the new iOS 14. The iPhone is done, so the brightness is, well, the iPhone is almost done. The brightness is sitting at max over there, as you saw, and the iPhone is now finished. Let's check out the auto brightness and going to accessibility. And guess what? Auto brightness is indeed off. It's really strange how that's happening. So the iPhone is sitting with just over 500,000 points. We'll compare that at the end, but look at the two phones on the right, the 60 hertz and 120 hertz panels. I think that it's much of a muchness if you ask me. It's all about the feel. Seeing the end results over here in terms of battery drain, the worst battery drain over here gets awarded to the Note 20 Ultra, Mi 10 Ultra, iPhone 11 Pro Max, and Realme X7 Pro, all with a 6% drain. The Samsung, Xiaomi, and Realme also share the same 22.5 milliamp hours per minute's battery drain, while the Oppo actually did the best in terms of battery life since it has the smallest battery capacity of all these devices here. It had the least amount of drain at just 4% and the best milliamp hours per minute reading of just 13.4. Now it's time to test out the end results in terms of the device temperatures over here using my heat gun. And as you guys can notice straight off the bat, the hottest device here is the Realme X7 Pro with 52 degrees peak over there, adding 19.2 degrees in Celsius. And the Redmi surprisingly here being the coolest at 39 max peak over there and only adding 13.1 degrees in Celsius with the iPhone not far behind that. First place gets awarded to the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra with 641,000 points which actually did better than the Snapdragon 865 Plus powered Note 20 Ultra. The Xiaomi is on the vanilla 865 and it did do quite a lot better over here but Samsung are known to dumb down their chip just a slight bit in order to be more on par with Exynos variant devices so that those consumers don't get too angry. In third place, we have the Realme X7 Pro with 527,000. The cheap, very cheap Dimensity 1000 Plus made by MediaTek has done a better job than the expensive A13 Bionic chipset from Apple. And that is running seven nanometer plus technology where the Dimensity is running just plain out seven nanometer tech. So the iPhone was fourth there with 507,000 points. Fifth drop down quite a lot, pretty much half over there to the Redmi K30 with the Snapdragon 730G at 270,000 and a little bit of a dip down below that is indeed the Oppo F17 Pro with the Helio P95. No surprise here, running 12 nanometer technology, getting a score of 213,000 points. Still usable as an everyday phone, just don't expect to get much out of it in terms of benchmarks. Though I have tested out gaming in my recent review and it did a pretty great job. The Xiaomi had the best CPU score and the Oppo the worst CPU score. Xiaomi once again, best GPU in its department over here and the worst GPU allocated to the F17 Pro. Worst memory once again on the Oppo and best memory once again no surprise on the Mi 10 Ultra. Best user experience on the Xiaomi which I beg to differ and the worst on the Oppo. It's impressive to see that the Xiaomi was the best in every department over here, that the Oppo had the least battery drain and that the Redmi had the coolest temps. But will the iPhone 12 Pro Pro Max come on top? in the coming weeks. Stay tuned for that one. This is Tech Nick and I'll see you in the next one.